Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous few videos in this playlist, we've been talking about a lot of different therapeutic modalities that we can use to treat things like pain, to deliver drugs to superficial tissues, to facilitate soft tissue healing and reduce edema, and then also for strengthening the muscle if we can't go through the range of motion of that joint. This video is really just going to serve as an overview, sort of a flowchart of figuring out uh, what treatments you would want to use and when and why. The when and the why are extremely important here. So let's first talk about pain reduction. You can see here two of the electrical techniques we're going to end up using. Those are TENS and IFC or interferential current. Again, remember, we can also treat pain with superficial heat and cold, also called cryotherapy, but that'll be saved for a separate video where we just talk about pain. This is just the electrical uh, modalities. The very first thing we should probably do is figure out how long the individual is going to be needing to use the device, either TENS or IFC. If the person needs to use it long durations, so basically up to an entire day length of time, the only type of TENS or IFC that we're going to be able to use is conventional. So conventional, remember, was a setting on TENS or IFC. We'll go into what that means in a minute. Now, if the person only is going to be using it for 20 to 30 minutes, um, then they can use the acupuncture setting on TENS and IFC. Also note that if they're going to be using it 20 to 30 minutes, obviously they can also use the conventional setting because the conventional setting can be used long duration up to 24 hours. But the acupuncture setting can only be done to a maximum of about 20 to 30 minutes. All right. Now, choosing between conventional and acupuncture settings really depends on how long you want the pain reduction or analgesia to persist after the treatment. So take a look at the acupuncture setting right here. So the acupuncture setting on TENS and IFC will allow analgesia up to five hours after the treatment is complete. So if you want somebody to be able to walk out of the clinic or off of the device generally and have analgesia for at least a couple hours after they complete that treatment, then the acupuncture treatment is going to be the best option, assuming they can tolerate it. And for that, the pulse duration is set between 150 and 300 microseconds, and the frequency is set between 2 and 10 hertz. Now, conventional treatment, that setting, doesn't have really any analgesia after the treatment is complete, but you do have it during the treatment. So conventional might be something you'd want to do if you wanted pain reduction while a treatment is going on. Okay, And so for conventional TENS or IFC, you set the pulse duration between 50 and 80 microseconds and the frequency between 100 and 150 hertz. Again, acupuncture gives you analgesia after the fact, but conventional does not but it will give you pain reduction during the treatment. Now, conventional and acupuncture are really just settings on both TENS and IFC. Both TENS and IFC have these two settings. So determining whether or not to use TENS or IFC really depends then on the size of the region you're treating. Now, when we're doing a large region, we can really use IFC or TENS. It doesn't really matter. But if the region of the body that we're treating electrically is very small, then we're really only going to use TENS because IFC requires four electrodes. You can't put four electrodes on a very small region. And so for that reason, if the region of the body you're treating is small, you might tend to select TENS and not IFC. Remember, nothing is absolute. And always make sure to refer to the contraindications and precautions. Now, what if we want to take a drug and deliver it transcutaneously through the skin so it can reach superficial tissues like superficial muscles? Well, then we can use iontophoresis. And drugs are chemicals, so they come in either positive charges or negative charges. So what we have to do is decide whether to put that drug on the cathode, which is negatively charged and repels negative ions, or on the anode, which is positively charged and repels positive charges. Well, we want to put the drug on the electrode that matches its charge. 
So if the cathode is negatively charged and is going to be repelling negative charges, we actually want to put a negatively charged drug on the cathode. And then it will migrate towards the positive electrode, also called the anode. If we have a positively charged drug, we want to put it on the anode, which is the positively charged electrode, so it will repel positive charges and cause this drug to migrate towards the negative electrode, or the cathode. Once we have this appropriate setup, we need to select our parameters, and the parameters depend on whether or not the drug is on the cathode or on the anode. Remember that the cathode has a maximum safe current density, or MSCD, of 0.5 milliamps per square centimeter, whereas the anode has a maximum safe current density of 1.0 milliamps per square centimeter. To review some of this math, go take a look at the iontophoresis video. Remember that we can also obtain the maximum safe current intensity by taking that maximum safe current density, which is a given for the particular electrode, and multiplying it by the surface area of the electrode. For example, if we're having a drug on the anode, which has a maximum safe current density of 1 milliamp per square centimeter, and the electrode had a surface area of 6 square centimeters, we would take that 1 and multiply it by 6, and that would give us a maximum safe current intensity of 6 milliamps. Now, regardless of whether the drug is on the cathode or the anode, the dosage should be anywhere between 40 and 80 milliamp minutes. Okay. The way we calculate the dosage is by taking the intensity that we're running the iontophoresis at in milliamps and multiplying it by the time of the treatment in minutes. So for example, if our intensity was 3 milliamps and we ran this for 15 minutes, 15 times 3 is 45. So our dosage would be 45 milliamp minutes, which is within this range. Also notice that the duration of the iontophoresis treatment should be no more than 30 minutes. Therefore, 15 minutes is certainly a reasonable treatment duration. Now, for soft tissue healing in edema, I'm going to go to the next slide because I have everything on here. Now, edema is unique here because it can actually be treated by both high voltage pulse stimulation or high voltage pulse current and these two techniques over here, NMES and Russian stimulation, which is basically NMES on steroids. Okay? But they're basically the same thing. Let's start with looking at soft tissue healing. Let's suppose we have an area of the body where there's soft tissue that's damaged. Now, the first thing we need to figure out is what stage of healing that soft tissue's in. Remember, we have three stages of healing. The first is inflammation or inflammatory, and the second is the proliferation or proliferative phase. So depending on the stage that that wound is in, we put a different electrode at the site of injury. If the tissue that's damaged is in the proliferative phase and is clean, then the positive electrode goes on that spot. So again, negative and positive electrode for tissue healing depends on what phase of healing that tissue is in. And regardless, uh, tissue healing has generally the same parameters. The frequency is going to be about 100 hertz. The pulse duration is about 100 microseconds. A treatment duration can be anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour, and this can be done three to seven days a week. Now, if you're going to choose to treat edema with high voltage pulse current, the negative electrode is actually going to go on the site of the edema or distal to that. The positive electrode is going to be proximal, and that will allow that fluid to move distally to proximally, okay, to move it back to the heart. And high voltage pulse current for edema has these parameters, a frequency of 120 hertz, a pulse duration of 40 to 100 microseconds, and the duration is going to be 20 to 30 minutes. Again, with these ranges, like 40 to 100 microseconds, refer back to the video on high voltage pulsed current. Now, edema can also be treated with neuromuscular electrical stimulation and Russian stimulation. Now, NMES, or neuromuscular electrical stimulation, and Russian stimulation are basically the same thing. They're kind of analogous to TENS and IFC, but for a different purpose. 
When using NMES or Russian stimulation to treat edema, now you put the electrode over the site of the muscle that you want to contract, and it, you should see a visible muscle contraction. Now why in the world would you want to see a muscle contraction if you're trying to treat edema? Well, suppose that the edema was in the distal lower extremity. Well, we know that the gastrocnemius and other muscles in the lower leg act as a skeletal muscle pump, and they help move that fluid back up to the heart. So that's why we would use NMES and Russian stimulation to treat edema. We're basically stimulating the skeletal muscle pump. And the parameters are shown here. Notice NMES and Russian stimulation have an on and off time and an on off ratio, and also a ramp up and a ramp down time, factors we don't see in the other treatments. So for edema, the on time and off time are the same. Uh, two to five seconds each, and they really should be the same amount of time each. So if the on time is three seconds, the off time should probably also be three seconds, meaning you have an on-off ratio of one to one. There should also be a ramp up and a ramp down time that's greater than one second. The duration can be 30 minutes and can be done twice a day. And that goes for NMES and Russian stimulation. Now, you can also use these two treatment modalities to strengthen a muscle. So for example, following an ACL injury where you may not want to move the knee joint through its entire range of motion, you can still strengthen the quadriceps isometrically by hooking the quadricep muscles up to NMES or Russian stimulation. And for this, you're looking for a tetanic contraction. The parameters are shown here. For NMES in Russian, for strengthening purposes, the on time should be 6 to 10 seconds, and the off time should be much greater, 50 to 120 seconds. Generally, when you first start these treatments on an individual, you want the on-off ratio to be about 1 to 5. So the off time is about 5 times greater than the on time. But as the individual gets better tolerance for this treatment, and is able to tolerate greater intensities and so forth, you can change this on-off time to 1 to 3. Now, per the patient's tolerance of this treatment, you can do 10 to 20 repetitions per session, and you can do sessions once every two to three hours. Now, once you've decided whether the NMES or Russian stimulation is going to be used for edema or strengthening purposes, you get these parameters, but then you have to go even further and look to see if the muscle that you're using it on is large or small. So on the small end, we might have the intrinsic hand muscles, or on the large end, we might have the quadricep muscles that we just talked about. So we have to decide the frequency and the pulse duration. For frequency, generally speaking, we're going to use between 30 and 50 hertz. However, for a large muscle, we can go as high as 80 hertz. So probably for the large quadricep muscles, we might actually choose to start at 70 or 80 hertz. But for small muscles, like the intrinsic hand muscles in the thenar eminence, we might choose to go as low as 20 hertz. So again, this range is not absolute. We can go very high for larger muscles and very small for smaller muscles. For pulse duration, we have a similar factor. For large muscles, we use a larger pulse duration. That can be between 200 and 350 microseconds. For small muscles, it's a smaller pulse duration between 125 and 200 microseconds. So hopefully this video helped you integrate a lot of concepts here and helped you understand when, how, and why you would use specific therapeutic modalities. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.